What's today? Wednesday. Hmm. Today's my day. American Gods' first run has now come to a close. Stars' new fantasy series was highly anticipated before it first aired, and with an eight episode first season which began to adapt Neil Gaiman's novel, fans were hoping that Brian Fuller, known for his previous work on Hannibal, could spearhead the series and make it one to remember. So did the first season deliver? And the answer is yes. There were some highs and lows for sure, but from the first second you watch the show, you can tell immediately that Brian's creative touch is all over the damn thing. Now for the people unaware, much like me when I first started the show, American Gods is set in the current day and it blends together a mixture of both modern and ancient mythologies. Gods very much exist and will continue to do so as long as they have enough followers. Prayer and belief sustains their existence, but the power that the older gods held over the course of time has naturally began to wane. With the coming about of newer obsessions such as media, guns and technology, the new gods lay claim to the earth as the old gods are now diminishing. That is where protagonist Shadow Moon kicks in. Ricky Whittle's main character is much like some of us, clueless and completely unaware of what is going on around him. Shadow is an ex-con released early from prison after his beloved wife Laura died in a car accident. He was lost and without purpose, then all of a sudden he found himself being convinced into a new job by the mysterious Mr. Wednesday. He thinks he's just playing bodyguard for a paranoid rich old man, but little does Shadow know that Wednesday is travelling across America to find all of the old gods that are hidden from the world and unite them in a war against the new. The most exciting of the recruits, which happened to be the first stop, had to be Peter Stemare's Chernobog. The series started out on a very strong footing, and Chernobog proved to be a worthy ally when joining up to the cause. Wasn't easy getting him on board, mind you. Shadow had to put his life on the line in a game of checkers, and rules stated that if he were to lose, his life would be forfeit to Chernobog's hammer. And he lost. He was able to goad his way into a rematch and win the second time around, so Wednesday's hammer would travel with them to Wisconsin. But after the meeting was adjourned, Chernobog's hammer will still be swinging down onto Shadow's head. Something to look forward to, apart from more Peter Stemare, when the show returns. Now looking at the old gods, we had Mad Sweeney, my personal favourite, a leprechaun who was down on his luck and without his lucky coin. There was Anubis, we had the narrator of many tales, known as Mr. Ibis. There was Bilquis, the Jinn, Easter or Ostara, who we met in the finale, and Orlando Jones as Mr. Nancy. He in particular had a very impressive opening story, giving us possibly the most powerful speech the season had to offer. And that was just the old gods. The newer ones looking to take over the reins were Technical Boy, a high-tech frightening higher power who most of the time had to be kept on a leash. There was scene stealer Gillian Anderson who played media and took on various forms throughout the season such as Marilyn Monroe and David Bowie. She too wasn't one to be crossed as she displayed her own strength by punishing Technical Boy on a number of occasions. Then finally there was the leader of the new gods himself, Mr. World. Crispin Glover played the unhinged leader too well, if you ask me. He looked on edge, ready to unleash what inner anger was brooding inside him and was scarcely used throughout the season. To me, that worked for the better. You don't want to use your main villain front and centre all of the time, and American Gods worked that screen time efficiently. Over 90% of it came when he was first introduced, and after a war became a very real reality in the finale, I expect Mr. World to be involved in something big when the gods finally start to go at it. Now a big aspect from the first season was derived from Shadow's dead wife Laura. Turns out she's not as dead as most after Mad Sweeney's coin gave her a unique second chance. She's still partially dead with flies following her everywhere she goes, but her travels alongside Mad Sweeney gave me my favourite pairing. The constant banter, abuse, dead wife jives made them a joy to watch. Laura was detestable, she was unlikable, and her bad fortune wasn't exactly unwarranted. She played a part in Shadow getting caught. I mean, I know later on we learnt it was the gods meddling in the matters that actually caused it, but she attributed to her own downfall. 
She was on a quest of redemption and to win back the heart of her husband. Laura Inall is a character who has been hugely expanded upon when looking at the book, and her story follows a much different perspective as the viewer continues to learn more about this rich fantasy world. Do you have a car? Yes, I do. Well, chop chop, Ginger Mims, let's go. Isn't she lovely? My overall verdict for the first season of American Gods is a low to middle-ish 8 out of 10. It's eccentric, flashy, trippy and brim with detail. The first season is a slow, methodical journey that eases us into this world. It's exciting, fresh and it dares to push the boundaries seen on TV. The awe-inspiring imagery is at times breathtaking and the sound elements added by Brian Retzel were crucial into taking certain scenes up to the next level. Brian Fuller seems to have another gem here. He's brought a lot of his long-time workers with him over from his previous projects, and you can tell. David Slade plays a pivotal role, much like he did in Hannibal, and now they both have a series on stars. Hopefully, they as a network let them thrive and give them movement to breathe. High points for the season were the premiere, everything concerning Chernobog. Episode 5, Lemon Scented You, with Mr. World's introduction, was one of the best. And lastly, the big Odin reveal in the finale. It took its sweet time getting to that reveal, but the scene was without question worth it once it finally arrived. Now saying that and pointing out the excellent points, the show wasn't without some missteps. Low points in my eyes were the oddly placed penultimate episode, which for me took away all the momentum which Shadow and Wednesday had gathered. It was just a strange time to divert for me. The episode itself was fine, but it just sucked away a lot of the pacing that the show had gathered. And aside from the timing of that episode, the one before it was a little lacklustre which focused on Vulcan and, to be honest, was probably the lowest point of the season. It was still good, don't get me wrong, no episode was bad. It just was a little lacking and left me wanting much more. In a way, the finale sort of did that, but it left me wanting more in a good way. In some respects, the finale didn't really feel like a finale, but hey, it's already been renewed for season two, so there's nothing really to begin to worry about. Now, if I had to pinpoint my favourite moment, I don't know, it is a tough one. The entire segment in the police precinct was marvellous and the lynching of Shadow was a harrowing lesson about the new gods' power. But peaking above all those for me had to be the big Odin reveal. I'd nailed down his identity much earlier on than the finale. Heck, they even wrote it out for you. But nevertheless, Ian McShane stole the scene and the season with his performance. I don't think they could have picked a better man to play Mr. Wednesday, and I haven't even read the book. He just took to the role with ease and owned it in every which way. And when you have a heavyweight actor like him involved in your show, it will always tend to garner some fans to come over and watch it just for him. Again, McShane delivered in every single scene he was in. Pablo Schreiber's Sweeney was another standout, bringing a more human side to the gods. And having Jeremy Davis as one of the versions of Jesus was also a cool touch. Overall, American Gods invites you to do one thing, and that is believe. It is what the first season is built around. Wednesday slowly turning Shadow from a man who believed in nothing into a believer. Perhaps that's where Wednesday's power truly lies. If he can successfully keep Shadow on his side, maybe he can lead the old gods and defeat the new in the war. He showcased his immense power and frightened the new gods at the end of the finale, so if he can endure just a little longer, maybe Shadow will really be the one to aid him in helping him strike down the new gods and give him another victory. That'll do it from me. What did you guys think of the first season of American Gods? And besides Mr. Wednesday, who I imagine will be many of you's favourites out there, what other character did you enjoy the most? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Please leave a like, comment and subscribe if you enjoyed the review. And I'll see you on the next one. My horse is the gallows. I am 